Hi, this is Rob and Mike from the McClellan Financial Group, and this is Think Smart with TMFG. Mike, how are you today? Doing good. How are you? I'm excellent. Excellent. You know, I had a little time uh, this past weekend with all the uh, rainy weather that we've had uh, to catch up on some of my reading, and, and one of the publications I look forward to every year is something called the Mutual Fund Landscape, and it's put out by Dimensional Fund Advisors. And it goes back and it looks at uh, on how mutual funds have performed relative to the benchmark or their index over the last 15 years. And the results are, are rather interesting. Have you had a chance to look at this thing before? Yeah, you, you dropped it off, so I got a chance to browse through it. And yeah, it's, it's interesting. But again, it's uh, similar to what we've seen in the past, too. You know, we started on this journey of getting away from active mutual funds about 15 years ago, and we had seen similar data at the time. And so it's interesting to look at this most recent report. It covers a time period from the end of 1999 to the end of 2018. It's actually a 20-year time period. It's covering about $8 trillion that is invested in U.S. mutual funds. And there's about 4,600 of them uh, that existed at the beginning of that time period. Um, about uh, a third of them were fixed income. A little less than that were international. And the balance were all uh, U.S. mutual funds. So what do you think we would learn from something like this? Do you think there's a lot of... Um, well, let, let me ask the first question about survival. Of those 4,600 mutual funds, how many do you think would survive the 15-year period? Well, when you go into it, uh, there's something that we've called over the years survival biased. And what survival biased is, is the way the mutual fund industry has tried to fool a lot of investors into thinking mutual funds are actually better investments than they are. And what survival bias means is whenever you get reports on how mutual funds have done over the years, it only includes the mutual funds that still exist, which means that mutual funds that either went out of business over the years or have merged with other funds because of poor track records no longer exist in the numbers. So whenever you see any number saying how mutual funds did, that's actually looking at the best of the mutual funds. So that's what survival bias is. And when you start to add that into one thing Dimensional has done that's very interesting is they have went and taken a look at the mutual fund industry, but they take out that survival bias, which allows you to take a real look at the true numbers behind how mutual funds have done over the last, now we have two decades of information. So I'm going to date myself a little bit here, but the first time I had heard this term survival bias was back in... It was probably 1996, and we had a gentleman uh, who was working for us at the time, who was working, we hired him initially, I think, as a consultant with Equion, and then he became part of Asante, and his name was Duff Young, and he had this whole presentation on how mutual funds underperformed, um, and one of the things he talked about was how these mutual funds would close down. I, I liken it to a uh, almost a shell game. And so let's take a simple example. You have three funds, and you get uh, see what their performance looks like after 12 months. And you've got one fund that did really well, uh, one fund that was sort of okay, and then one fund that underperformed its benchmark. And so what you do at the end of that first year is you shut down the fund that didn't do that well. And you can either close it down outright or you can just transfer the assets and its poor track record into the fund that did really well. And then for the next year, you just launch a new fund and you see what happens. And if you have a few winners at the end, those are the mutual funds that you market to the general public. And if you've got a bunch of losers, you just keep closing them down. So how bad do you think this this is? Do you know, is it 10% or is it 20%? What do you think the numbers look like? I used to think over five years it was 20%, but I imagine with how many funds I see now, things have probably risen over the years. Well, they have. Here's the from the from the 
the new study, over five years, about 40% of them typically closed down. Over 10 years, about half of them. And over 15 years, 60% of them closed down. Only 40% survived. That's pretty bad. Yeah, it, it is. But to be honest, when I go think of all the names of when we used to work in mutual funds, the names that used to exist from global strategy to all to boomernomics funds to all these things that don't really exist anymore, it's I guess it's not really that big of a surprise. So if you think about it, if you'd picked 10 mutual funds and you'd done that over a time period of 15 years, only four of them would have survived. That's pretty bad. Yeah. So survival is one thing. Well, how many of those that do survive actually do beat their benchmark over those time periods? That data is even more interesting. So how many do you think would actually beat the index after fees over a 5, 10, 15 year time period? I remember it was always around the 20% range. Well, the data shows it's not different. Uh, over 10 years, about 21%. 15 years, about 18%, and over 20 years, about 23%. So you have about a 1 in 4, 1 in 5 chance of beating the index. So let's go back to, we started with 10 funds, 6 of them closed down, there were 4 that survived, and only 15% of the 4 will actually beat the benchmark. So what's 15 of 4? I guess it's 0.6 or less than one fund will beat the index. It This stuff becomes more relative and more important because when you look at statistics, statistics become more important with the more data you have. And it gives you a more accurate statistic on everything. So as we begin to move with 20 and 25 year history, we can really get a feel for how this works. These are no longer data anomalies anymore. I would always describe it if uh, if I gave you a coin, I said toss this coin in the air, and you flipped one head in a row, that chance is 50-50. If you hit, hit two in a row, you start going, oh, that's a bit of luck. If you hit five in a row, you think that's a lot of luck. All of a sudden, if you flipped a coin a thousand times and it came with heads every time, you know there's something wrong with the coin, right? And that's what this long-term analysis really leads you to be. There's something wrong with this idea that mutual funds can outperform the actual marketplace. When you look at all this data, and now you're, you're what, close to f four to 5,000 different funds? Over a 20, 25 year period, when you see this data come out, it really leads to the answer that mutual funds really don't outperform the indexes. I always think, you know, I go back to some logic. If, if you're going to outperform, it need, means you need to take risks, more risk than an index fund would take. And the only way to take those risks is if you have information that those are risks worth taking. But the world is so complex today, there's not one person or one group that can have that special information. It just doesn't exist. Uh, there's so many professionals brilliant minds trying to outperform the market that they can't do it. There's no, there's no Wayne Gretzky of the stock market. Remember the people who make up the index range from people doing trades in their basement to mutual fund managers to managed money professionals to uh, people who work for the company to people who own the company. Yeah. And that's what makes up the marketplace. So then, you know, a person who's optimistic might think, well, you know what, I understand a lot of them don't survive and I understand a lot underperform, but what about if I just picked winners? You know, what about if I just took, say, the top 25% of winners over the last five years and stuck with those? Wouldn't I be continuing to win? What do you think my chances are? Sounds like it would work. Well, but what, what, how does it work? Well, you and I used to believe, we used to put a portfolio together of funds that had great track records, even great recent track records and long-term track records. And I think we came to the same conclusion. 
doesn't work. So the odds say you've got about a 25% chance of remaining a winner for the next five year period. In other words, you've got a 75% chance that you're gonna underperform. And again, every time you go to a bank, you'll see a big uh, banner on the front of it talking about the one fund they had that outperformed last year. The one that survived all the shell games and the one that looks like it's brilliant. But when I look at that sign now, I go, wow, there's a 75% chance that sign is changing in the next five years. Absolutely. Well, this is Rob and Mike for Think Smart with TMFG. You have been listening to the McClellan Financial Group of Asante Capital Management Limited. Asante Capital Management Limited is a member of the Canadian Investor Protection Fund and Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada. Insurance products and services are provided through Asante Estate and Insurance Services Incorporated. This material is provided for general information and is subject to change without notice. Every effort has been made to compile this material from reliable sources, however no warranty can be made as to its accuracy or completeness. Before acting on any of the above, please make sure to see a professional advisor for individual financial advice based on your personal circumstances.